The complete history of art from the early 16th century to the present can be traced through the medium of printmaking. Many of the most important names in the history of art have made their greatest impact and have accomplished their most significant and best known work in the various graphic arts techniques. All forms of graphics, whether woodcuts, engravings, etchings, lithographs, or serographs, have been eagerly sought after and hold lofty positions of honor in the collections of most major museums of the world. Since the late 19th century, printmaking has ranked with painting and sculpture as one of the principal means by which artists express themselves. Today's intricate printmaking techniques requires a combined effort of publisher, artist, and master printer. It is important to understand at the outset that original graphics are not reproductions, and reproductions are not considered original graphics. This film will help you appreciate the imagination, creativity, complexity, and handmade unique qualities of one of these graphic art forms, serography. The 20th century brought an explosion of artistic creativity in printmaking and in combinations of graphic techniques. So anxious were artists to work and experiment in color graphics that if their particular style of art did not lend itself to one specific graphic technique, they mixed the techniques or modified them or created new capabilities to further express what they wanted their art to say but couldn't say as eloquently in paintings or watercolors. Although serography became a recognized art form in 1938, it was the 1960s and pop art that took serography to new heights where it has remained. Giants such as Liechtenstein, Rauschenberg, Warhol began further experimentation and achieved results in color and texture unavailable in other media. The technique of serography is certainly the most versatile of graphic techniques. It is capable of producing the finest of lines as in etching or engraving, or the smallest detail in pieces requiring a hundred or more colors. It can produce broad, bold areas of color, whether opaque or transparent, and can have the feeling of a watercolor, oil, or acrylic, but with an added dimension. Serography will very effectively layer color upon subtle color and create wonderful impressionistic areas that will change and react to different light angles and intensities. It has a virtually unlimited range of colors, hues, densities, and textures to produce either the strongest of social statements or the most subtle, lyrical, quiet moods. It is truly a painter's printmaking technique. Making a serograph involves the use of a stencil applied to a fabric mesh stretched over a rigid rectangular frame. Ink is poured onto the frame and pulled with a squeegee through the open areas of the stencil. This action produces an image when the underside of the screen comes in contact with the paper. In order to determine what an image will look like, it is important to understand that the areas kept open in the screen by a stencil are the areas that will print. Areas that are blocked out or closed on the screen will not print. The serograph we will be printing is by California primitive artist Linnea Pergola. It is entitled Cruise Night and when complete as you see here will have been printed with 60 colors. Pergola's technique of using thin black outlines around her colorful subjects translate magnificently to serographs, but is very complex in its execution. All serographs begin with making stencils into the shapes and designs the artist wants to print. Let's first show you several different ways of making stencils, all of which were used in cruise night. 
The first step is to create a master outline which will act as a guide from which the stencils will be made. For cruise night, a black and white photo negative was made of a painting and blown up to 30 by 40, which will be the image size of the finished serigraph. The photo negative is taped down to a light box table and a clear acetate overlay is taped over. Both are over the black and white negative. This overlay, when drawn on, not only produces a stencil, but also acts as a guide for registration during printing. Following the negative, the lines are traced with pen and ink on the acetate overlay. These black lines will later in the process block out light and create the first of the 60 stencils needed for cruise night. Wherever a line is drawn, it will later print. This acetate will create one stencil and will print one color. This step with variations will be repeated 60 times, one for each color. A second stencil is now being created by using a frosted acetate, or mylar as it is sometimes called, again placed over the negative. For this stencil, the drawing is done with a greasy pencil instead of ink. The pencil will also block out light and its lines will also print. The pencil creates a texture and a shading effect that the pen and ink simply cannot accomplish. The frosted acetate is used because it too is more conducive to the creation of textures. For a third stencil, we are using a colored mylar called ruby lith or amber lith. These color mylars completely block out light, like the pencil or the ink, so any areas that are not to be printed have to be cut out by hand and peeled off. The color mylar pieces you see remaining on the film are the areas that will print. This particular form of stencil is generally used for broader areas of a single color, such as the awning, the sky, or the street in cruise night. The pen and ink and pencil stencils are usually reserved for smaller details and special effects. When cutting stencils, straight lines and shallow curves are more easily cut with a fixed blade knife held at a low angle. For tight curves or finer details, a swivel knife is held vertically. A fourth stencil is made using the color acetate again, but this time in conjunction with an airbrush that is spraying a light blocking ink onto the acetate. This airbrush technique will later print as a grainy texture. Since this is one stencil, both the colored mylar and the sprayed areas will print one color, but with two different textures. In serography, as you can see, many combinations of stencils are made and used to best fit the artist's technique and intention. How they are made and the effects they create are virtually unlimited and bounded only by the artist's creativity and imagination and the technical expertise of a master printer. Once a stencil is complete, it will be attached to the bottom of a screen for printing. The frame is the support over which fabric is stretched. Together, these two components make up what is called the screen. Most professional printers use metal frames as they do not warp or bow under fabric tension. There's a very wide range of materials that can be stretched over the frame to make the screen. However, 100% natural silk, in most cases, is still the fabric of choice. As it does not split when stretched, it's unaffected by moisture and humidity and is relatively impervious to the chemicals that are used. Most importantly, due to its strength, it resists distortion when the squeegee is pulled across it. Different screens are made to handle different printing effects. A fine mesh allows only a thin film of ink to pass through, where a coarse mesh allows a heavier flow of ink to be dispersed. Usually several different types of screens are used for the same serigraph. Professional screen stretchers are shown here checking the tension of the fabric with a tension meter. 
it must be the same in the center as on the sides. The screen is cleaned and degreased before a stencil can be attached. Any dust or grease on the screen can affect the printing. Now master printer Juan Rocio is applying a light sensitive emulsion with a squeegee. It will be applied to both the front and the back of the screen. Unlike the stencils we've made to block out light, this emulsion will absorb bright light. Following measurements to ensure perfect registration, the acetate stencil is taped to the back of the screen. The stencil is a positive image. Once taped to the back of the screen, it becomes a negative image. When printed, it again becomes a positive image. The screen is now placed into a vacuum frame, stencil side down. This machine sucks out the air and uses pressure to further force the stencil to stick to the screen. This process takes about four minutes. As you can see, as the air is leaving, the rubber mat is receding and molding itself to the shape of the screen. This adds to the pressure needed to stick the stencil to the screen more permanently. This next step is really the key to understanding the principles of serography. Before removal from the vacuum frame, the screen is subjected to a very strong intensive light for about four minutes. Most of the screen, you remember, was covered with a light sensitive emulsion. These areas are now absorbing the light and a chemical reaction is taking place. As the emulsion absorbs the light, it hardens. And when it hardens, it blocks the openings in the screen so that during the printing, ink will not pass through. These areas will not print. Conversely, the parts of the screen covered by the stencil are blocking out and not absorbing the light. There is no chemical reaction and no hardening in these areas. These areas of the screen protected by the stencils remain open. After exposure to the light, the screen is washed again. This washing further hardens and continues to seal off the areas covered with the emulsion. At the same time, the stencils covering the areas we want to print weaken under this heavy spray and simply wash away. What is left are openings in the screen in the shapes that we've created. These openings are now the only part of the screen that will permit ink to flow through and will print. Now the screen is almost ready to print, but first we must be sure that no unwanted openings exist in the silk. Tiny pinhole openings can result from dust or grease that had stuck to either the screen or the stencil. If this is the case, they were also washed away, leaving openings in the screen. If not sealed at this time, they too will print. To close these unwanted pinholes, a chemical blockout is applied to the back of the screen. Being careful not to reseal any openings we do want. While the printer is looking for and blocking out pinholes, we can clearly see the newly created open areas in the screen. That elongated curving arrow design is the shape of the stencil we created and will print as the diner sign of the finished serigraph. This is not one of the stencils that we will be printing today as it first must dry and the color has not as yet been mixed. What we are printing today will be the red awning and the gray street in cruise night. Juan has made his own color chart on custom colors favored by Martin Lawrence artists. The inks are oil based and have a consistency more of paint than ink. It can take a half a day just to decide on the printing sequence. Shall it be top to bottom, left to right, light colors first, less complex to more complex? Which colors must be printed over or under another color? This is critical because so many colors are layered over each other. About the only rule of thumb there is, is that the smaller details are left to the end. The red ink for the awning has already been mixed. And now we are preparing the first of five separate gray colors 
that will be used for the street. First, a transparent base is poured, followed by a primary black. After mixing, a sample is squeegeed through a trial screen, and in this case, the result is too light. More black is added. This trial and error can take an hour or more. Just as the number and type of stencils used are limited only to the imagination, so too are the magical properties of color in the hands of an expert like Juan. There are two aspects to color. One is aesthetic, to do with color and selection. This is completely the prerogative of the artist. The other, however, is technical, concerning analysis and how this selection may be matched or mixed and overprinted. Is the required color transparent, opaque, or translucent? Transparent inks are like stained glass and allow light to pass through. They can be overprinted to produce subtle colors. Here, the bright red, when printed over the yellow, appears orange. Opaque inks will simply cover the first color, but must be applied more thickly. Transparent inks have the quality of a frosted glass. They do not change the underlying color, they simply mute it. It looks like a softer tint of the first color. Once the color is matched and prepared, the screen is now placed on the printing table and hinged to the proper printing position for the correct depth of color for this particular run. The pergola is now ready for the fourth of 60 separate color runs. Cruise Night was first printed with white over the entire image. This solid color helps seal the paper and make it react evenly to other colors as they are added later. The second color was the light gray, then the blue. For successful registration, the position of the screen relative to the table needs to be constant. The paper must always be placed in exactly the same position on the table for each run of color. Those tabs on the table ensure that a printer can feel that the paper is correctly positioned rather than having to rely on sight alone. Even the direction of the printing stroke is indicated with an arrow on the registration guide. All screens will stretch slightly when the squeegee is pulled across it. It is critical that all colors are printed in the same direction. Serographs are made on very high quality paper that is pH neutral and will not yellow. It is stable and absorbs only a small amount of ink, thereby holding tiny detail. It has been decided to print the red awning before printing the gray for both ease of handling the paper and in consideration of drying time. Ink is poured onto the screen and the first pull on blank paper is to check coverage and registration. Each piece of paper is lined up and the pulling of the addition begins. A serograph of this size always requires a two-person operation. Training for a printer can take six months just to get the feel of the pressure needed to run the squeegee. The training time for the stencil makers can be a two-year process. During printing, called additioning, each piece must be checked again for registration, coverage, and pinholes. Is the ink color remaining constant? The creation of a serograph of 60 colors in an addition size of 550 is a very demanding artistic undertaking. It requires the creation of 60 handmade stencils applied to 60 bulky, heavy screens, the mixing of 60 separate colors, and the pulling of 33,000 separate impressions over a period of four to six weeks. As complex as this is for 60 colors, we currently have artists like King, Rios, Patrick, Basilico, Yamagata, Greenblatt, Scharf, who are all working on pieces of 100 to 150 colors and more. As each print is pulled, it is stacked into a spring-loaded drying rack. Each rack holds 50 sheets, and a full edition when printed will fill eight to 10 racks. The drying time between colors 
vary depending on the area covered and the thickness of the inks, the type of paper, and even the humidity in the room. After drying, the pieces are removed from the racks and carefully stacked in preparation for the next color run. Usually, a studio can print no more than two to three colors in a day. To print the gray street in cruise night, we are using a semi-automatic silkscreen press, which is occasionally used for larger areas of color. The hand press is normally used for finer detail and smaller areas. As the gray street is being printed, keep in mind that this same area will receive between five and seven more colors layered on top during the next few weeks. When a color run is started, the entire edition must be completed. The silk in the screen heats up and changes from the pressure of the squeegee. If we were to do only one half of this color run today, tomorrow the registration would be off on the other half. More than a week has now passed and 12 to 15 additional colors have been printed, including the diner sign made with the arrow stencil we saw earlier. This 16th color is a medium pink and will print just the lettering that spells the silhouette above the doorway. This stencil shows the small detail possible, but also gives you a better idea of the intricacies involved in registration. The words the silhouette on the building are not quite the same color, and so it required a separate stencil and a separate color run. Artist Linnea Pergola is shown here conferring with the printers. The artist input at different stages of the process can occasionally result in major or minor changes in color or tone from the original concept of the graphic. The sky has already been printed with about three colors. This color run will add a darker blue just above the mountains. After this run, the sky will still be receiving at least three more colors during the next two weeks. The printing sequence may look haphazard, but it is very carefully calculated. It is again based on the drying time for the area to be printed and the ease of handling. At this point, we are still less than one halfway through completing cruise night. Several more weeks have now passed, and when the addition is complete, each piece is checked again by the printer and finally by the artist. It is now signed by the artist in the lower right corner. The stencils are destroyed and the edition is numbered. Cruise night is now completed. This relationship between artist and master printer to be fruitful has to be two-way. The artist presents ideas for a serigraph, making demands on the printer to generate new ways of making stencils and blending inks. In return, the studio extends its expertise and knowledge of the medium, making suggestions and offering solutions to creative problems. The master printer should be able to solve any technical problems posed by the artist and translate the solution into a form which will print. The final artistic decision, however, must always be made by the artist. As indicated earlier, the greatest artists throughout history that have worked in printmaking have had a strong relationship with the master printer. The resulting graphics are far more likely to be artistically innovative as well as technically superb. This partnership has been to the great advantage and lasting delight to collectors of fine art serigraphs.